Yeah. Jody, are you fixing? Am I am I centered? Am I centered in the camera? We have some technical difficulties again, but Jody's figuring it out. She's she's a whiz with this. And we got so much snow last night. I cannot believe all the oh snow. Oh gosh, did we? Hi Wanda. Did we Hi Wanda from Wawa. Wanda. I bet Wawa got Hi, a lot Wanda. of snow. I'm sure they did. Oh my gosh, how's my hair? Did you do something with your hair? It looks fantastic. It always looks good though. Your hair always looks good. Thank beautiful. you, Tra Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> It so, is beautiful. So, um, oh my gosh, it's Jeanette from Shibugami, Quebec. Hi, Jeanette. Good to see you. Did you notice the sign? It's sweater weather. It's sweater weather. It's sweater weather. And I, let's see, we have to talk about your sweater. I'm it wearing is beautiful. a new sweater. It is beautiful. Yes. Well, this is from Joji Locatelli. It's radiate. See how I, I radiate. Right? It is beautiful. Sometimes I radiate. Today, I don't know. Am I pretty radiating? much, hey, pretty much. You're, you're always Tracy radiating. always. Tracy always radiates. She really does. I try to. <laughs> Are you going to ask me about my sweater? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your sweater. Turtle Dove by Espastrico. Okay. It is beautiful, and you see everyone wearing it, and it fits perfectly. I love it. It does, and I love the color. It fits very nice. That color oh, is look, beautiful. It's, it's Suzette from. Hi, Suzette. Head smashed in Buffalo Jump, Alberta. Could you believe that? I can't believe it. That. But she's back again. Hello. You know, this. Th there's something weird, and it's not the camera angle. It just feels like this set is different today. Yeah. It feels unusual. It feels different. And I can't figure out what it is. Well, I don't know. It's not right. And this either. chair feels a little bit different, mm -hmm. too. It doesn't feel like my regular chair. But, you know what? Oh, my gosh. Richard from oh. Rochester wants to see your socks. What? Richard, how did you figure... <laughs> where is that question What's coming from? And how does okay. he know about your socks today? I have no idea. But I was in... We were in Port Hope at the Black Lamp. Yes. You know, yes. I love the Black Lamp. Yes. Lori's like... Lori's Jody. fantastic. She's wonderful. She yes. says, Jody, I have something for you. And she knows how I get She always has on. something for you. Cold winter nights. I've got something for you. Well... Here we have it. Here we have it. Make lots of room. <gasps> Those are beautiful. Okay. Those socks are gorgeous. So, these absolutely Pat beautiful. Campbell. I, I love think, them. I love them. I think They're Lori beautiful. said that she hand spun her own yarn. Oh and, my gosh. And this is what she came up with. The colors are amazing. Absolutely and I, I absolutely beautiful. love them. They're going to keep me warm this winter. Yep. Thank you, Pat Campbell. Fantastic. And are you going to wear those when you go snowshoeing? <laughs> of course. I'm Let's hope it's not too soon. I'm definitely going to have to knit me up a pair before Christmas. <laughs> When's the Christmas? last time we went snowshoeing? Have we ever gone snowshoeing? Yeah, absolutely we have. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I forget things. <laughs> uh, I hear something. Oh, but what is it? I don't know, but I don't recognize that noise. I hear oh something coming. I think somebody's coming. I don't think we're in the right studio. Is this not sweater weather? Is this not... That's our sign, but this doesn't feel like our studio. Something's not right. I think we better get out of here. Something's coming. Something's I'm, coming. I'm, I'm, I'm going. Oh, Bye. Jamie, can you just adjust that a little bit? Perfect. It smells like pumpkin spice around here. What do you mean? I don't know. It just, I don't know where that came from. Okay. What, is you? what the? <laughs> what is that? What is that? Lip gloss? That? <laughs> what? That? Well, that ain't my shade. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Hello, and welcome to the Cabin Boy Knits Woolcast, coming to you deep from the Canadian forest. For those of you with us for the first time, this is Christopher. And this is the other guy. Jamie. We've got a lot to talk about this episode. Tons to talk about. I want to... I've got two finished objects that I want to share. Two? Yes, two. And I'm going to talk about... Uh, let's see. What's in my kitchen. I was up to a little something-something. Yes. Yeah, it smelled good. And I'm going to share what was in my dye pot for those of you who didn't watch the, the tutorial last week. And we have a very special calendar we're going to talk about. And a great festival. I can't wait to talk about the festival because we've got some great dyers that we can share with you. And we're also going to talk about um, some Latvian history and Latvian mittens. Speaking of mittens, uh -huh. we can talk about my finished object. Oh, that's, I already, think, I think so. that's, that's already one of them. Yeah, we'll talk about a finished object at the beginning, and we'll talk about one at the end. So, okay. here they are, and they're not quite Latvian mittens, they're Kantvian mittens. <laughs> Is 
<laughs> is that something you just you just made that up? No, it's a technical term. <laughs> it's a technical knitting term. Okay. So that's those are the mittens. And so I'm calling them Canfian mittens because I started off as Latvian mittens and I I when I was looking at the fingers and how the, the end of the mitten was finished off, it just didn't speak to me. So yeah. I wanted the rounded rounded mittens. So I can't really call them Latvian mittens because they're not technically Latvian mittens. However, I did um, use a pattern from a kit that we purchased when we were in Denmark. Fanny. Yeah, so just to connect the dots again, <laughs> we were in Denmark picking up a box of Latvian mittens, <laughs> a kit to make Latvian mittens. Yes. And we ended up with Cantvian mittens, and, and here they right. are. And I just so happened that, so we do have one of the boxed Latvian mittens. That we picked up in Denmark. <laughs> that we did pick up. As one does when in, you're in Denmark. In Fanu, you see, at the festival. Yeah. So we met. Now, unfortunately, we don't remember her name because this was... A couple was, of years ago. Yeah. And she was lovely and wonderful. We, we saw her... Did we see her at breakfast? We had her at breakfast. The, we had while, breakfast. While she we was there. fantastic. Yeah. And her mother was... <laughs> We were actually staying in the same place. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. And her mom was... Watching us like a hawk. She was like an overprotective mom. It's like not like this lovely woman was... She wasn't like a young girl. I mean, she was probably... I don't know. I mean, she's not... She wasn't a little girl. She's... You know, I'd say she was in her 20s, maybe. I thought 30-ish. Either way, her mom was very overprotective. Let's say she was in her 30s and okay. she looked like she was in her 20s. Yes, exactly. Okay. And she was lovely. And I mean... We were just buying mittens. Well, where would you put the box? We haven't talked about the box yet. What, are we going to talk about the box? Well, I need to talk about it. <laughs> so bring the box back up. <laughs> well, it's, it's from... It's from... Okay, so this is what... this is, okay, okay, here's my version of this. So, there... Here's a box. Uh, it's a kit for Latvian mittens. And it's from? And it's... And, and so the... There was a mother and daughter, and they were selling them at the festival. Where are you going with them? I want to open them up. So... And they're beautiful. They're really nice. And we bought a bunch of... We bought a couple boxes. Show them. <laughs> I just want to show them again. <laughs> and they were selling like hotcakes. They were selling so many of them. So inside the box, you get a pattern. And so that's the pattern. And so there's also... See, it's missing in this box too. There's, so this is... I'm going to back no, up. There's no, there's another... There's another, another piece. Yeah. yeah. Which so, is yeah. So I'm going to skip back to this for a second. So all I had in my box, because I misplaced the other the instructions, was a chart like this. So that's why I ended up doing this part of the mitten. And I didn't have the chart for the other side, so I, I made up this oh, side of the mitten. I just made it up. I thought you only changed the... No. And then see how it has... The end of it has the uh, triangle. Or the point. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't see myself walking around with those. Because um, chances are, you know, poke his eye out, so we don't. <laughs> I don't that. trust myself with them. Mm -hmm. So I just thought that's why I changed it and, and just changed the. And do you know, do you recognize this at all? This side? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> uh, should I know well, that pattern? Well, kind of. We were talking hey, about saltwater mittens. Uh huh. And oh. So I. So part of this is the saltwater mittens, and part of it is the uh, Latvian uh, mittens, okay. and so it. So you rounded the end, but you I did the. I didn't did. realize you did the whole back side differently. I did, yes. Okay. Yeah, so now there can't be in mittens. Okay. And so in this box, I just wanted to show. There's multi. This one's multicolored, and they give you um, all of the the little um, skeins of yarn in it. Just and did we mention who they're from? Did I say that when I was first picked up the box? I think so. Yeah, happy. Happy. What, what was it called? Happy. <laughs> what is it called? It's called Hobby Wall. Oh, Hobby Wall. Happy Wall, Hobby Wall. It's Happy Hobby Wall. It's anyway, hobby they were wonderful. Really nice people. They, they sold a ton of these and they yeah. were priced right too. That's why we bought a couple boxes. And what's interesting about it now is because I could tell you a little about a Latvian mitten history. And it's interesting that you should do black and white because that's part of what. I've learned. So, do you want to hear more about it? I that? want to hear more about it. And why don't I get my my hot water and honey? Well, <laughs> yes, I'm just going to put this over here for now. So, what are you drinking? I'm drinking 
what I always drink. Spiked coffee? Scotch. Oh, scotch. <laughs> no. Scotch. Tea. Scotch in a co coffee mug. <laughs> I'm very sorry. It's tea. Okay, so. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about Latvian history and Latvian folklore. So, in folklore tradition, um, I'm going to mention that there is a lot of symbolism, and that means in knitting and in colors and patterns, there's a lot of mythologies and tradition and symbolism. So, um, one of the things I'm going to mention is that um, as far as the wearing of mittens, um, there was a time when the Latvians were wore mittens more so than any other nation in all of Europe. Wow. Um, I mean, they wore where they wore them, to, you know, for work, for play, special occasions, and everyday apparel. So, so did they wear the same mittens for all of the occasions? Or no, they, they had ones? something different for every occasion. Oh, wow. And they, had, they made special occasion mittens and so forth and so on. They used them, you know, to, you know, when they were chopping wood, they used them when they were, you know, um, what do you call it, with the oxen through the fields. They, they wore them all the time. Special occasion Farming. mittens. and Plowing. Exactly. So they, in general, like in any culture, um, that, and they also would identify with their mittens. Their mittens. It's sort of like, um, you know, when you one dresses, it shows your personality and your individuality, that sort of thing. So, in the symbolism, one of them has to do with. Um, let's see. Where should I start? We the won't beginning. start with colors. No, we won't start with colors. We'll start, for example, with the hands, because you wear mittens on your hands. So hands in general say a lot about a person, as we would know in just everyday culture. So sometimes they would, the mittens would be used, or they would be referred to or symbolize a mask, which not necessarily a good thing, because it would say like it's covering up. Perhaps you have, you know, aggressive hands. You've got a clenched fist behind your behind your mittens. Like your Russian mask. hands and Roman fingers. Exactly. Or other times it might show your vulnerable hands or kind hands. So, you know, as we know traditionally, you would remove your mittens or your gloves in when you're greeting somebody as to when you're shaking their hand because then you're exposing yourself to your openness and honesty and, and, and you're greeting them with open hands, let's say. Mm -hmm. So that is one of them with the symbolism of the hands. Now, uh, another example would be um, the giving of gifts. So the giving of gifts of mittens, for example, um, you would give a gift of multicolored wool because multicolored wool would symbolize um, vitality and life and fertility and that sort of thing. So that brings us to... So this one then would be a fertile box, you're saying? It's certainly because of, because of all the colors? I would say so. You would give those as a gift, yes. To now, somebody that want you want to be fertile? Well, that's my next point. Okay. In part of the tradition, someone who was looking for, or they would give a gift to a suitor. A suitor, as in someone they like someone they're looking forward to maybe spending more time with. So if you would give a gift of mittens, multicolored of course, um, and that person accepted the mittens, then that was an acceptance, sort of an agreement of marriage. So you would oh. accept the invitation and then that person in turn would then wear white gloves. They would remove the glove, the, the mittens they're wearing and they would wear white mittens because white mittens were a symbol of purity and innocence. And then... Well, that's obvious because of my mittens. No, no, yours it's different. <laughs> different. They're not white. They're black and white. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> Shucks. So the I thought that was going to be so obvious. So at the wedding ceremony, um, the bride and the groom would wear white mittens because it was also a symbol of the ritual of transition, which they're leaving behind their old life and moving forward together in their new life. Mm -hmm. Together. So that is the traditional white mitten. And of course, um, at the wedding, all of the invited guests would get, would get the gift of mittens, multicultural, oh. multicolored mittens, uh, as opposed to a solid color, because it just means life. Yep. It means a lot in multicolor. So that was one of them. So now let me talk about the colors. So the most often used colors in Latvian mitten knitting would have been uh, 
black and white. Now, you and I, we wouldn't, or maybe all of you would consider, you know, we talk is about that where black, and white, black and white as a color. And we wouldn't necessarily, you know, is it a color? We're not going there. Black and white was used most often because they represent the sky, the earth, the masculine, the feminine, the spiritual, mm -hmm. the material, and also, um, there's one more. It would also, oh yeah, the combining of lightness and darkness. So that was the reason for the black and white. The second most often used combination of color would have been to add some red to that. Because as you and I know, and maybe some of you do know, if you've watched us before, red, <laughs> red is a very ancient color. It's one of the oldest colors out there. And many cultures around the globe used red in, in all of their fibers, yeah. including Latvia. And so red, of course, for them signifies um, sun, energy, and the power of life. Oh, wow. So, very important. Black, white, and red. So now, let's move on to the patterns. So, the patterns, the geometric shapes. So, for example, um, squares and triangles were repeated often, yeah. and they're interspersed, and they be interspersed with um, a snake pattern or crosses, and oh, also yeah, stars and um, and the sun figure. Now those reflect um, the, are a symbol of the cosmos and signifying harmony. As in the cosmos, they would think of it as the ancient gods. You know how the ancient gods created man, created earth, yeah. created every everything on earth. So they look at it as a creation. And their ancestors would pass down these stories and these traditions because knitting means wholeheartedly the spirit of creativity and creating life. So you can see how knitting would be of great importance to the Latvians yep. in their creativity and knitting life. So that brings us to, I want to talk about a couple more things because these are a little can bit... Can I ask a question or will I say... So, can I... So... The first, when you were talking about the colored yarn, yes, and you're giving the colored yarn to people, so you're giving a gift of yarn, and they were making them, the, the recipient was making the mittens out of the colored yarn. Is that what it was, or they were giving mittens that were colored yarn? They would give no, no, no. They would give the, the gift of colored, multicolored mittens. I see. It's always okay. about giving mittens sure. as a gift. Okay. That was that's yeah. always been a tradition. I'm with you. And at the wedding, everyone gets multicolored because sure. they want you to, you know, life liveliness, energy, all sure. of the above that I mentioned in the colors. Awesome. But of course, there's, of course, no, the question being there, of course, those aren't the only colors. I mean, they're so multicolored patterns oh, for sure. and hundreds of patterns. And where I got this information, I'll tell you in a minute, but of course, there are hundreds of, of patterns that include so many different colors from different areas, just as you would traditions, patterns from hundreds of years and different colors meaning different things. Well, that's what attracted me to these mittens and to the kit was just the patterns. The patterns are so beautiful. They're really nice. Okay. And I'm just, <laughs> that's nice. No, that's very good. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my train of thought here. So the last couple of things I want to talk about are a few little fun, you know, folklore, folk tales. So, let me just say that... Um, do I have time to go and make a coffee and come back? <laughs> Some people will do that because my friend told me when it gets to certain parts in these, you know, wool casts, they kind of go and make themselves some lunch or something, come back and then continue on. But this is so fascinating, you're going to want what? You're going to want to hear it because it's all I about am absolutely knitting and wool. So, one of the, an, uh, one of the folklore terrors is that they would wear these, they would mi wear mittens as protection against evil spells and evil spirits. So you would wear these um, to ward off those evil spirits, but you would also have them as a magical protection. So if you came across a found object and you didn't know what it was, and you're kind of concerned because it could have negativity attached to it, you would you would, you would would wear your protective magic mittens oh. before you picked it up in case it had some negative energy or some evil spell attached to it. Yep. Now, one childhood story, tale, um, that's passed on through the generations about the old man's mittens. Yep. <laughs> no, I'm not going there. Okay, so the old man mittens. So one day, 
the old man went off into the forest to collect firewood. As one does. As one does. <laughs> as one old man does, yes. <laughs> so, on his way, he lost his mitten. Now, in folklore and tales, mittens are always a symbol of um, a place of shelter or a small, uh, a small, what do you call that? Um, what do you call that when it's a, a microcosm of, of, of the world that's always in folklore? So, he lost his mitten. And out of, an, out of nowhere, um, all of these creatures and animals made their the way, made the their story. way, do you do? Yes. So they made their way towards the mitten. So it started off from small to big. So there was a fly, a mouse, a rabbit, uh, a wolf, and a bear. And they all made their way into the mitten to find shelter and warmth. And they were so happy. They all started dancing around in the mitten. I had this book when I was a kid. What? Yes. So there you have it. But I'm going to finish the story. <laughs> so I, I'm surprised you know it because there is. Yeah. I, I was going to attach a North American story that we might all know. So, so they're dancing around and happy and happy and warmth with the mitten. Do you know what happened after? I just remember them all living in the mitten. Okay. So what happens after is along comes a rooster running towards the mitten to come on in, but then it goes, you know, sings. What does a rooster do? Cock-a-doodle-doo! Scares the heck out of all the creatures. They start scampering and scattering in fear, and as they do so, they, they tear apart to shreds the mitten. And forever, the old man forever only ha ever has one mitten. Wow. That's the story. Yes. Now, I want to tell you about um, lost mittens. As you know, our North American sort of story is the three kittens who lost their mittens. That one, you, you know. Yeah. Three little kittens lost their mittens. You could relate it to that. You know, can't have any pie, but then they found their mittens, then they get pie, then they dirty their mittens. Anyway, three little kittens who lost their mittens. Which brings me to all of the cat lovers out there, because there's a Latvian cat little tale or legend and that is I was gonna say we do have a lot of cat viewers I'm sure of it I see a lot cat of cat lover viewers exactly yeah. so they're gonna like this as it relates to mittens so in one particular region of Latvia um, the tale goes that God when God created um, all of the beasts on earth there was not a cat to be found anywhere so the God threw down his mitten, and voila, created a cat. So in those regions of Latvia, um, a cat is known as God's mitten. Oh, was it, is the, is the mitten made out of cat fur? I don't know, but I keep wondering, like, <laughs> did he really have to drop that mitten? <laughs> I'm sorry, those who know me. I'm not a big cat fan, but that's how the legend goes. And the last one I'm going to tell you, hold on to your seat. There's another one last one. It's like the gift that keeps giving. I'm going to say, I say <laughs> this one for last because it's very apropos. It okay. involves you and I. Oh, okay. Yeah. He and I. And to all of our... Do I know this story? You do not know the story. Okay. And, bet, <laughs> and if you tell me you do... Okay, so this is for <laughs> all of our male knitter friends out there. So, this is how this story goes. Um, how does it start? So... How do I start this story? So mittens. In folklore and in ancient times, or... Are we still in Latvia? Still in Latvia. Okay, yep. So they had mittens for men. But it wasn't to cover your hands. The mitten, singular, was to cover your nether parts. <laughs> One mitten to cover your pet because that mitten helped protect your sexual prowess. So, so you take one mitten, is it shaped like a mitten? I don't think so. <laughs> and for men out there, I know there are some out there. I have seen, we have seen mittens for male privates. So it's a mitten, a sock, if you yes. will, a sock that helps protect the family jewels. 
And we know in this day and age, it's, I mean, there's truth to that because scientifically we know that, you know, men in the summertime, you're supposed to, you know, let loose boxes are better. You don't want too much heat because that could cause production problems. And I know guy stuff, eh? Poor, girl, gonna, poor girls, say. poor girls. You probably never <laughs> For knew everyone watching, ever. hope we don't <laughs> see a knit, <laughs> a knit cast. <laughs> okay. So, no, but th this is truth. And you know, in wintertime, you want to keep them warm. But They're also, called willy warmers. Okay, willy warmers. Yes. So, and if, you know, things are too snug and too tight, that's not good either. So, in this mythology, it was a th there was a three-year cycle. So, your three-year cycle, and the fourth year, your sexual, the potency was ready for you to now go out into the world, meet a bride, so you wear the mitten for four Spread years, the seed. and then three years. You're ready three on the years. fourth year. The so it's a way to to it's 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 basically a way to um, help with Can you fertility. What help with fertility. Help that with fer must have oh gosh, <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> After three years, <laughs> he always ruins all of my stories. <laughs> so anyway, Christmas is coming up, and you've all seen them. We've seen Christmas Willy Warmers. I've seen a Christmas. Willy we Warmers. have a friend who has a pattern. On Ravelry, who has oh, and we'll well, there you it. have it, girls and boys. <laughs> that wasn't a even on our of, list. Of things to talk about. So we'll add that. <laughs> and that, my friends, is a history of Latvian history mittens in I, short. I did not know that the story was going to go in that direction. So I was saving great. that story for last to, to <laughs> hear it before. Anyway, awesome. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're I'm all red. You're, you're blushing. You're I'm not bothered. blushing. This one's blushing. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about what's in my dye pot. Okay. I just finished. Moving on. I just finished. Or did you have any? Sorry. Did you no, have anything to talk about? About. <laughs> I, mean, I just wondered if you had any more stories to share. <laughs> okay, wait. There's one. There, there's a gazillion of them, but I've stopped in there. That one. Okay. Was, yeah. um, so let's talk about. For those of you who did not see the class, well not, it wasn't really a class, but just mm -hmm. a how-to video or episode on dyeing with acorns, leaves, and bark. Oak. Not just any leaves. Oh, right. I didn't get there yet. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, so, oh, he's right. So, oak. So, oak leaves, acorns, and... <laughs> yeah, it's payback time. Uh, so, anyway, I, I just wanted to show you some some of the yarn fr from that. Mm. Yes. And it was, uh, it was a lot of fun to do. And I've got, we, we have a neighbor and our neighbor, well, we have, we have a neighbor who has tons and tons and tons of leaves on his front lawn and he was going to just take them to the dump. Yeah. So we took those off of his hand, which is great. We also live in the oak forest. Yes. I mean, there's a lot oak of, hills. I mean, there's leaves all over the back yeah. woods back there, but then we have to collect them. Yeah, but we happen to drive by, and these neighbors in particular have like, they gotta have, like just a dozen trees, and oak, they're only oak huge trees, huge oak trees in the yeah. front, in the front yard. That's all they have, and they had bagged all the leaves. Yeah, already bagged. Yep. Yeah. So we took that, and we also we asked, have... we asked them. Oh, yes. <laughs> we didn't want to look like too creepy. Too yeah. creepy. Weirdos. I'm glad. I'm glad yeah. you're afraid. Yeah. So too you creepy. walked out. You yes. knocked on their door. I and did. Asked them yes, for I thought. It. What are going to look like creepy weirdos going up into the yard and going, oh, we'll just take the, what? Because they were in really I nice bags. I think could see them there. Yes. They, they recycle their bags because they're these heavy duty bags. Yeah. They bring them to the dump site or the, wherever they compost them, dump them. And they, so they said, sure, take a hold, but we do want our bags back. So I'm glad I knocked on the door because we could have been chased, And then acorns, in. you know, I don't feel too badly about picking the acorns and um, here and not leaving them for the animals because there are so many oak trees everywhere and especially the white oaks the the deer and the turkeys and the squirrels love the the acorns from the white oak tree we've got a lot of them so yes. i gathered those up and the bark we've got bark from fallen oak trees you never pick bark off of a live tree right. so um i have a bunch of them here this one is the biggest surprise for me I'll also put a Why picture up as well because I didn't know exactly uh, when I was looking at it that the leaves would come out this color. I thought they were going to be okay. closer to to the acorn color and um, or the bark color. And then I took 
this one and this one. So this one was an after bath of iron. Okay. And so I got this color. So anyway, the, the colors are quite complementary, and this is definitely going into a design because uh, I think they'll work well together. Well, I don't know. I don't know if they could if they could see that close up, but if they looked at your that close up photo that you put on Instagram, like I'll put it up here. Yeah, there is. Well, there you can see a real contrast. They're all yeah. very contrasting. It's incredible. This doesn't show. Well, yeah, you can. I think you can pick it up somewhat there. Yeah, but it's amazing. The absolute contrast between all of these five right there. So that was it. That was in my dye pot, and that's going to be in my dye pot for probably a couple of weeks because I want to use as many leaves as possible. And the acorns, um, I've got, I've probably got a couple hundred acorns that uh, I'll use as well. But the acorns are fantastic because the acorns in the iron bath uh, give you a nice dark color and. It's, that's the color that I'm looking for. It's, it's, it's going to be great and, and a bunch of yeah. designs. And that really deep, rich, golden, almost like a golden color. It's, yeah, it's quite unique. It's fantastic. Oh, let's go there. I love that. With that. So, mm -hmm. um, did we mention that there was some sweater drama this week? Sweater drama? Yeah, sweater drama. <laughs> I don't know. I had some sweater drama. I was the one who brought the, I was the one who brought the drama into the house this week. So I was, I sit with a group on Thursday nights and, and, and it's some friends that, and we sit around on via Zoom and we chat and we decided to have for that hour or two hours, mm -hmm. we decided that we would, rather than working on random projects, okay. we would all do a sweater. Oh. And the guys that I knit with are phenomenal knitters. They're really, they're great knitters. Yes. And so I had mine all picked out because I, I love it. Um, it has positive ease to it. And it's just... Positive it's like, what? <laughs> so it's... Well, I, yes, I'll put it... B, like letter V? Ease. So I'll put a picture up here. But just the way it falls, it is absolutely oh. beautiful. And it's not snug. And it's something that I would wear for... I'm going to be wearing it every weekend. I, I know. Except for when he's on, you know, doing some of his other wool casts. Because usually you don't wear... A sweater. Well, in the wintertime, I will have to. <laughs> we'll I definitely wear an apron, at least. <laughs> <laughs> and so, anyway, I just thought, I've got the pattern. It's pickles. It's from pickles. And it is pickles. a... It's funny, you know, when I... In my library of sweaters to knit, mm -hmm. a bunch of them are from pickles. Okay. From Norway. It's not with pickles. And it's, it's not, the winter... It's not a pickle pattern. It's not a pickle pattern. Say that three times. Yeah. Not a purple pickle. A purple pickle pattern. Oh, gosh. I'm and... And so it is the winter sailor sweater from Pickles. Oh. And so I nice. had this, I was okay. all ready to go. I had my yarn and the yarn I purchased, do you remember the Toronto, the great, the great Toronto yarn crawl? Yes. I say that five times fast. Because we said it wrong every time we <laughs> talked about it. And so I picked this up at, up at the knitting loft and it was oh. Americo yarn. Americo's gone out of business, unfortunately. Oh, yes. And so I bought as much of it as I can. I thought I had a sweater quantity. So I'm sitting down. I, so I download the pattern, sitting there doing my swatch, and I'm thinking, there is no way that I have enough yarn. Like, there's no way. And so I checked the net. I checked the pattern again. I thought, well, something's not adding up. And then what I realized... You, okay. What, what do you think? I was thinking, well... You could have just knitted it up. It might have fit me. Well, I was going to think maybe I could <laughs> knit uh, a crop top for Okay, you. well, so then what did you have to do? What, did, what are you going to do? Well, so the crop top idea I didn't think was going to fly in the wintertime. You're not really going to want to wear a crop top. So I thought... You never know. There's an occasion for everything. Well, <laughs> you never know. And I was just wondering, what is going on? So I went back to the pattern, and it's in Norwegian and English. Oh, and oh, so I see where this is going. Again. Yeah. So I and they don't in a lot of patterns they'll have um, both the I guess American and um, European sizes for needles and and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Well, this only had one, and so I was reading it incorrectly, and so I was completely <laughs> completely off. And we talked about this before because people yes. have asked questions about you know some of the wool. Why is it say you know. I don't know, 240 yards, 100 grams. So you're going grams, but then you're doing yards. And we talked about this, about metric. And yeah. um, what's opposite of metric? The empirical system. Yeah. Um, where we, we learned both as children yeah. because the transition from Canada. And then I was reading a whole history about it. And I said, that is a good uh, little lesson for a future wool cast. That whole oh, business for sure. of sizing. Yeah. 
So anyway, I screwed up my sizes and I thought, well, what am I going to do now? So I went upstairs to figure out what yarn am I going to use? Because I really wanted to use the Ameri Americo. You didn't yarn. think of a diet. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I will say that. Okay, well, I'll knit this up and maybe by next year at this time, <laughs> when I get on that, you know, Suzanne Summers <laughs> or Share workout videos, oh, oh, that sweater will fit. Yeah, or Richard Simmons. But he's, oh, he's missing forget, an action still. Don't forget Richard Simmons, yes. Yeah. You know. So I do have enough yarn if I take all my colors that I purchased and make them into sweater, but that's not what I'm going to do right now. Okay. I do have some ideas about that. So I'm, that's on a shelf. Mm. Now, I found some yarn from Custom Wool Mills in, um, out of Alberta. Yes. And I've got a lot of that upstairs. They're a great um, okay. mill that we work with. And okay. so I took that yarn. It's alpaca and wool. And oh. I am dyeing that in leaves right now. To get these amazing colors. Yes. And it's going to be the perfect oh, yarn. Said. The perfect mm -hmm. yarn for the sweater. It's going to be fantastic. So I'm really excited about that. I just haven't figured out. There's two colors um, in the sweater, and one of them is just very thin, thin lines. Okay. And so because it's uh, positive ease, the sweater, I, the, I think I'm safe because the lines are really thin. Okay. Um, if it was a negative ease, it'd be fitting form, form fitting to your body, and yes. the lines wouldn't look great. Because um, yes. then I'd have to go on the Richard Simmons diet for that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm just debating on what the con I'm, I'm what lost. what <laughs> what the color is going to be. Is it going to be natural? I think oh, I might go brother. with birch because I like the idea of having the colors uh, from trees. Hmm. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So I'm really excited about that project. Okay. So the sweater drama has. By taking control of that trauma. Oh, the trauma. And I am going to come out with a great sweater. That's good. From Pickles. Okay. No, that's good because that, that, those beautiful earthy tones that will look amazing. Yep. So, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. I think we have a calendar we want to talk about. Yes. Do you have the calendar? I have the calendar. Yep. Okay. Let me see. Oh, I'm going to need this. Let me grab this. Okay. So, I jotted down a few notes for this one because I had a chance to glance over this calendar the other day, um, and then we decided, you know, moments ago that we we're going to talk about it. <laughs> moments ago. That's not true at all. <laughs> well, you always, this was always on the list to talk well, about. Absolutely. That's what I mean. But I mean, we're like, okay, we're doing we're doing an, another episode and we're going to talk. I about think what, what you just found out recently was that I said, why don't you talk about the calendar? <laughs> That's the part of it. But well, I think exactly. we'll both talk about it. Yeah. So <laughs> no, because we went through it and and I went through it a couple of times and, and whatever caught my eye and um, everything was very, I mean, all of it's fantastic. Um, yeah. And so I'll talk about it a bit. And sure, yeah. And so I, the calendar is uh, produced by Two Sheeps LLC. And we communicated with one another on Instagram. And so they told me a little bit about their project and I thought it was fantastic. And I said, I definitely want to um, talk about this yeah. on, on the show because yes. I think it's great. So Two Sheeps, basically the concept is this. They've, they're they working with 12 independent dyers. And so the independent dyers will provide a um, specific color only for this. And so the so let's say in January, when January hits, and the calendar is 2021. So when the calendar hits uh, January 2021, then the first one ava becomes available. And it's available for a whole calendar year. And so they've got some great dyers that they're working with. And again, these colors are specific to this calendar. And that's, I didn't know that part, because that makes it yeah. even more interesting because of the little bit of information I, I found out about a, a couple of the dyers. That sort of changes what I was thinking about because I didn't know, I thought maybe it was just a color that they just, I'm gonna no. fall into this. But specific, that's different. That's gonna be interesting for my commentary then, I think. <laughs> So you hold making, on, you hold on to your commentary, me, making me think. and I'm going to re read this to you. Okay, uh, and I will put a link to this because to the calendar, so you can purchase your calendars. And, um, and can I just interrupt one more time? Absolutely. And I don't think it's not only purchasing the calendar. You then can purchase. Can you not purchase the wool through the links associated with the calendar? The specific wools 
on the calendar? Yeah, so there's a couple things. So one okay. is um, you can purchase, purchase the yarn through Two Sheeps LLC, okay. um, and I'll give you all the information for that. And then, of course, because you're interested in the great um, indie dyers that are part of this, you'll want to go into their websites and look and Absolutely. see what they have available. And the dyers are from North America, so that uh, from the U.S. and from Canada. Okay. I just want to read this little blurb. If, Congratulations on purchasing the, inaugur the inaugural Two Sheeps 2021 calendar. Our 2021 calendar focuses on North American independent dyers, and it is not just a calendar. Each dyer has created an exclusive colorway that you can purchase. Two, so I just said that, didn't I? You did just. <laughs> two, sh good. two Sheep LLC will sell our limited volume of each colorway for one year from the first day of each dyer's calendar month. Below is a chart with more information on each dyer, their exclusive colorway, and the yarn bases. So we're going to get into a couple of the dyers. We're not going to go in through all of them, but you can find out the information online of all the dyers. But I did want to just rattle through all of them. Okay. And, and maybe also more importantly um, is their sort yeah. of mission statement, which... Um, is that something we should share with them as well? Because that's important as to what the calendar is all about, is it not? Yeah. So the, the question would be, and the, this was my first question as well. Okay. So I'm buying this calendar, um, and where's my money going? Like, what's what's the what's the purpose or motivation behind this? Right. So I'm glad you brought that up. So did you want me to read that? Sure. Bit? Yeah. So here, here, what they're talking about is. So when you to purchase these unique colorways, well, this is that's not the part I was going to read. Yeah, no, it goes into it though. No, down here it goes into it. Okay, <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> I thought you were talking about where the money goes. Oh, well, yeah, which is right here. Oh. Okay. Well, <laughs> I had two th trains of thought. Okay. <laughs> that's not what I was going to talk about. And are the trains but of thought headed here. towards one another, or are they <laughs> on separate tracks? <laughs> I don't know anything about this calendar. It's just he's had it, and he's okay. trying to get the information from me. I'm not okay. So uh, we'll have giveaways and donations to our favorite charities. Many more uh, photos of these amazing colorways, knitted and crocheted samples of each yarn, and more. We are grateful to each dyer for creating, dyeing, twisting, and labeling um, these amazing skeins of yarn. We are thrilled and honored to showcase their talent in our company's first calendar. Okay. So the money is going to their favorite cherries and they talk about that as well. Right, and what I liked about this whole project was this part here, because of, you know, you're talking about drama with your sweater and we know there's been some controversies and some issues and we won't get into that negative, but what I like, we're gonna get into the positive about this, because this here is what, what Two Sheeps LLC is strongly committed to anti-racism. We support and defend the rights of all humans, regardless of skin color, religion, gender identity, culture, religiosity, size, ability, etc. And so here in the end, and there's a little more about that, but then here it says, we will not allow any racist, homophobic, xenophobic, or other hate-based comments on our social media page, social media page, or in any other communications. Yeah. So it's all about diversity in all manners in order to put ideals into action, which yeah. is what they're doing with this and with the charity. Absolutely. So that, to me, is very meaningful in today's... Oh, for sure. Today's, absolutely it is. Not only knitting world, but the world yeah. at large. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I think that's an incredibly important part to, to highlight. Um, so the dyers are... So the, the participants in the calendar are Wedgwood Fibers, um, Ex Libra Fibers, Siren Fibers, Mitchell's Creations, Knitting Knitting Bro, Kim Dyes Yarn, Low Labine Yarn, uh, Speckled Finch Studios, Twisted Willow Yarn, Dytastic, Utopia, and Earl Grey fiber company and one thing that we need to say is a shout out to Lisa and Maria they're the two founders of of the calendar so it's and I could that that I commend you with that because that print is really small it is I, tiny I wasn't, reading, I wasn't <laughs> reading that whatsoever so you so what are a couple of them that you okay really, let's flip through yeah let's because we're sure. not going to talk about all of them again you can go yeah, on the website there's 12 
Yeah. Right. And the, the, and going through each of them would be almost as long as listening to Jamie's stories. Exactly. <laughs> um, so we're going to go to the. I, let's see who's. Comes Are you going to start by month? Well. Yeah. I was going to do February. Okay, you do February. Okay, so who gets to talk next? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I jotted down a few notes. So February. Let's have a look. See here. Okay, so February is all about um, Rita. Now, this is her yarn, and Rita is from Ex Libris Fibers. So, do you know what Ex Libris stands for? No. From the library. And you see, because Rita, when she's not dyeing yarn, she works as a librarian. And or it wouldn't be worked as a librarian if it was Ex Libris? X doesn't mean she's an X librarian. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm always interrupted when I have a very Sorry. important something important to say. And my train of thought is very fine. No, I, I'm really excited about you talking about this one. Yeah. So what I love about, what I, I really picked up on this I love about Rita. I haven't met her, but I really like her. And we may have met her though. We talked about this. Um, no, we probably didn't. That, that was the, never mind, the Canadian, the Canadian in, in, in here. So see? Lost my train of thought. Okay, so Rita. Um, so Rita has, she's, yeah, so she's inspired, of course, being a librarian. I, I'm just, she reads a lot. I am sure of it because she's inspired by books and poetry and novels and things she reads. And she finds inspiration in her colorways through these books. So I love that. That's so interesting. I'm always interested in knowing someone's inspiration or where it comes from when, they, when they're dying. Exactly. This one is really exciting. Yeah, and so she describes her, she describes her yarns or her colorways as, and don't you laugh, because as moody, mysterious, quirky, um, a bit bookish with a lot of atmosphere. Okay, you lost me on the bookish, but... <laughs> no, I'm bookish because I know a whole lot of things. I thought that's that, true. That that's sounded true. just like me. Yes. <laughs> she might as well just call it Jamie. Or Jamie the, other, yarn. the other guy. The other guy yarn. <laughs> So, so I think that's like a lot of us though, because um, she would hope that you take her yarn and you you create a story. As this is yeah. what we all do, right? I mean, whether for whatever reason you choose a color or a pattern or what you're going to make for who or whom, there's always a story to every step of yeah. the way. Usually, there's a story attached or there's a story afterwards. So her yarn, this gorgeous uh, mauvey, purple mauvey. I'll put a picture up here yeah. in case the reflection. Um, so this one is called Starkfield, and it was inspired by the novel Ethel, um, Ethan, Ethan, Ethan Frome by Edith Wharton. Yeah. And Pulitzer Prize winner. Yes. Yeah. And what, what was one of her big um, Age of Innocence? Yeah, the yes. Innocence. So there you have it. Now, I pointed out a couple more of her colorways because I wanted to do a little more digging. So one of them, and this is where I'm thinking, so this is interesting because I don't know that story and I should have Googled that story to know as what the actual inspiration was, but I didn't because I didn't know she specifically, you know, created this color and based on that novel. But I'm going to but aren't you interested though in, in going and reading that now? It's I'm, well, I'm, going, I'm going to have, to, I'm going to, I want to know about it because now what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to have a sense of who Rita is though, because one other colorway that she has is Grey Gardens. Oh! So you know, you and I know Grey Gardens. We love Grey Gardens. So for those who haven't seen Grey Gardens, I mean, I'm not going to go into details, that'll be forever, but Grey Gardens, there's a documentary, a real life documentary of these two ladies who existed, and there's also a movie made called Grey Gardens that came out not that long ago with Drew Barrymore and one of my all-time favorites, I love both those actresses, Jessica Lange. And they were so fantastic. And I mean, they, they yeah, so embodied those two characters. Um, they were up for nominations for Golden Globes. I think Drew Barrymore either won a Golden Globe or Emmys. They were award-winning performances. So Great Gardens, Quirky. You, you can't make this up. So that's something to look into. But the other one that caught my attention was, and this was just random because I thought, the yellow wallpaper. Hmm. <laughs> the yellow wallpaper, what's that all about? So, this is what I got from the yellow wallpaper. So, basically the story is, in a nutshell, the story is about a woman who's unwell, or at least her husband deems her unwell. She's, she's, she's sick, apparently. So he takes her off to a summer place. 
he, they go off into the countryside into this big mansion. He's actually also her doctor and her sister, his sister is the nurse. So they put her in this room, random room, and it has this yellow wallpaper. Now the main character is just disgusted by this wallpaper. She thinks in the narrative, you assume that maybe it was perhaps a nursery at one time, but this wallpaper is just nondescript, not much of a pattern. Um, and she becomes obsessed with this wallpaper and she notices a few nicks and notches in it and this and that and the other. So her husband, as time passes during the summer, he thinks she's, she's getting better because she's a little calmer, she's a little more with it, that sort of thing, but he's very condescending. And basically he's, he's I feel, is creating the illness. It's, it's, she is not ill. But slowly but surely she starts to see patterns within the yellow wallpaper. So she sees, eventually she sees, um, she sees a cage and bars and a woman behind the pattern behind the pattern and it's basically a trapped woman. Wow. But the husband is continuously um, being meaner and meaner to her and as he thinks she's getting better, she's getting more and more obsessed with this wallpaper where in the end, in the end when he comes in, she is lost, uh, uh, she's a little bit lost in this pattern and she starts tearing apart the wallpaper and chewing at it and just devouring and tearing up this yellow wallpaper. This did, <laughs> did not know we were going there. <laughs> it's called, I know. All from a, but this, this, this is what I mean. If you think about it, it, it was a personal, if you, I'm not going to analyze it, but think about it. It's basically, there was really no pattern there, but the pattern was in this person's mind. And within that pattern, there was another pattern. So the color has to do with yellow and pattern and connecting and all of this mind right. sort of stuff. So I'm curious to know what Starkfield, that is now in this calendar, what that all means in that color. And that's it. <laughs> And I want to meet you because I find sure? that so interesting. <laughs> we will put a link to everyone's uh, website so that you can go on and look at their store yes. and you can find out more about um, each of them. Yes. So I think we're going to May. Are we going to May? Sure. And so on May, I think um, I'll do this by... So May is Doug. And Doug is Knit and Bro. Have we met Doug? Um, I've definitely talked to um, Doug on Instagram. Okay. And so he is, I think he's located in Pennsylvania. Um, the dyer behind Knit and Bro Yarns started experimenting with yarn dyeing to expand the range of hand dyed yarn available for men and the people who knit for them. He has a couple things about Doug. One is when you go on his website, um, check out his label. I love his label. It's. Mm -hmm really interesting. I'm not going to explain why, uh, but I think he's got a great label. But more importantly, his yarn is beautiful. He has okay. really, really nice yarn. Uh, it's fantastic. So uh, I was excited to see him in this calendar and I encourage you to go and check him out. And I love I love this color in this photo because yeah, it's just it's got nice. this incredible it's energy. It's just this electric blue that's just got this. It really stands out though. Like It's, yeah. it's very unique. It's, it's yeah, fantastic. Well, so, okay, be... who's up next? I think you're up next. Mm, September. And, and by the way, all of these are gorgeous. All of these yarns are gorgeous. Oh, I just absolutely. wanted to, um, some of them we've already talked about in prior episodes, but I also wanted to just, um, for the sake of time, just do some that we weren't necessarily as familiar with. Yeah. Do you remember what month you're, you're going to next? I was going to September. September. Oh, what a great month September is. September, why is that? I don't know anybody born in September or anything. Libras. 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 Virgos and Libras are in well, September. Well, that you? Oh yeah, my birthday's in September. And what about your mom? And my mom as well. And my mom as well. My mom was a Virgo and I'm a yeah. Libra. Yeah. Yeah. And my mom as well. So, okay. There you go. September. September is a very special month. Here we have it. This beautiful, deep, rich purple color, if you can see that. Um, and it also has like these amazing flecks and sp little splashes of uh, 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 multicolor in it, which is fantastic. Now this yarn is called Skyfall. It's by Kate from Twisted Willow Yarn. Do you think she's a Daniel Craig fan? Well, I was or a wondering. James Bond fan. Skyfall. That's what I was wondering because the only Skyfall I know is is the movie, the James Bond movie, the Adele maybe song. She, yeah, maybe she's an Adele fan. She could be. Yeah. One or the other. 
but we don't know for sure, but it's called Skyfall. But what we do know is that Kate is Canadian. She's from the London, Ontario, Canada area, which London, Ontario, as we know, is about an hour and a half or a little further, a little south of Toronto. A little southwest. Well, so, yeah, because if you were to hop in your car from Toronto and go... Oh, you would go a little more. Well, southwest. Yeah, so if you were to hop on the, the main highway, which is the 401, um, and go... West. West, two hours, you'll hit London. Uh, right. If you go two hours the opposite way, you'll end up at our cabin. So. Okay. Everyone could either go to see Kate or come see us. Or they can do they both. They could do both. It's within. <laughs> it's within the realm of distance for sure. <laughs> so what we don't know much about. So I don't know a whole lot more about Kate. Only because. She, okay. Well, let me just say that she describes on her Instagram account. She describes her yarn as luxurious, subtle, and moody. I would say looking at her yarn that is bang on that's perfect is that right yeah oh yeah her yarn is beautiful it, the colors are very they're, they're gorgeous they're okay. really nice she's really but that, that, that that's an excellent description of her yarn well i thought you were going to you know make a comment about the subtlety and and, and to compare it to me again as being subtle <laughs> what what <laughs> <laughs> well, that's obvious to all the viewers that you are very subtle and you're very luxurious. And I'm very luxurious. And you're not moody. No, not at all. Not one bit. Okay. And the other thing that this would explain why I couldn't find a whole lot of information, what Kate is all about. But she does say in her, on her Instagram is that living the quiet life, which sort of explains. Yeah. Some people, you know, they're, they're, they're very, you know, they, they like to just keep some personal stuff personal and. And like just their, like us. And like the, their, what did you say earlier? Privacy. They keep their privacy. Their privacy. So, either way, um, not only can you purchase her yarn and find her yarn through the Two Sheep's calendar, but this is interesting because some of her yarn is found in, um, in Canada. One of the stores is the Knitting Loft, which yes. is a, a, a very good store in, in Toronto. Um, the other two that I, found, I thought were very good in the U.S., she's at Black Mountain Yarn Shop. People know that one, yep. and Brooklyn General, where we've been there as we've, well. We've yep. we've been, so um, that's pretty much um, what I know about Kate. Yeah, and I would say that um, she her yarn is is, is really nice, and uh, definitely check it check it out. That's done. So the the last one I want to talk about is in November, and that is um, beautiful yarn from Wisconsin, and it is Utopia. Utopia okay. yarn, and it is from Catherine Ashley Wright, and I love her story. She she has a great story. I went to check out her site, and they also have a mill as well. They just oh. purchased a mill. Nice. So out of Wisconsin, um, she dyes yarn, and she also has a mill. And here's something that's really cool. She takes the one of her lines of yarn. It's mm -hmm. called Deja Vu. And Deja why do you think Vu. it's called Deja Vu? Does she repurpose some yarn or something? Yeah, kind of. It's so it's the stuff that ends up on the ground or oh. on the floor after after that, and they get it up. And so you can have anything. You can have llama or alpaca or various types of wool or mohair, like all different things. Okay. Silk um, could be in this deja vu skein. So she just oh, so she sort of uses those yeah. those end bits to create and, a new and, one and spin one. Yeah, that's really good. That's. Yeah. Because there is probably a lot of waste where that stuff would just go oh, where, for sure. wherever would it, yep. it would go. So it's fantastic. And this is, in fact, she's also, hmm. um, you know, the color's stunning. So she uses environmentally friendly practices, and obviously she uses up everything that she has as well. So I thought that was an important one to, to point out. But they're all fantastic. They're, they're all great. So I highly encourage you to go to the yarn shop, or to the yarn shop, to the website, to Sheeps. I'll put a link to it and check out the calendar and and pick one up for yourself and purchase some yarn for a good cause and purchase some, some yarn beautiful well. yarn because yeah. everybody needs yarn everybody needs yarn yeah so why don't we go into your kit tell us what you were doing in your kitchen well in my kitchen so my last just my last thing that i did in the kitchen when i was doing pickling and things were um i used tomatoes now end of season tomatoes 
So which, does that mean brown tomatoes, or what do you mean by in green season? tomatoes? Green tomatoes. So you know, there's always the unripened tomatoes on the vine towards the end of the season, and this is good because at farmers markets you always get them in 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 late fall because before any frost, there's green tomatoes, and so I made this green tomato chow chow, and basically it's a green tomato relish, as other people would know it, but we call it chow chow because it's a traditional recipe that my grandmother used to make. And it's also traditional to have with French Canadian tortier. You have it as a side. Mm, I love tortier. I like tortier as well. And so it's sort of traditional because now you're getting towards the end of fall, getting into winter, and you've just made this green tomato ketchup chow chow preserve because anticipating the Christmas season that you're going to have with your tourtière, which, you know, some people, um, I know a lot of people that, you know, they have tourtière and they just don't, don't really have it with, with ketchup, like, you know, traditional tomato ketchup. But I like it with gravy. So, well, that's different too. <laughs> to each their own. It's just so wrong. But I'm from Scarborough. That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a grab of this recipe. And you know what's interesting is because French Canadian or, or any, anyone who was like, you know, think about it way back when, you know, the harsh reality of living in a farm, large French Canadian families like my yeah, grandmother. Sure. My grandmother, they were 16 children. My mother's partner's family had 22 children, two sets of oh twins, uh, two sets of twins. No kidding. Wow. So if you think about, if anybody talks about French Canadian, um, you know, culture and history, we have large families yeah. and so nothing nothing went to waste and nothing was was wasted so you used every last bit of what came out of your garden whatever you had on hand you did not waste a thing yeah and if you were lucky enough well lucky enough I'm just going to mention this one other thing is if there was a hunter in the family because you a trapper a hunter you know you go fishing that was a source of fiber we had an uncle who um, liked to hunt and yeah, and trap. So when my we have a lot of hunters around here. That's why I mention it because it is hunting season, and we've talked about it. Like we hear, we've been hearing gunshots every morning. They're just out here on their own. We are not going for walks in the forest this week. We were told by one of the local hunters who would plow a driveway that just in the backwoods there, there's a there's they own about 350 acres. It's a large area of land, and they have a they have a, a little hunt cabin back there, and they hunt. But my uncle, my uncle Bobby, would come for a visit this time of year. And when Uncle Bobby came to visit, it was like, mm, what? Because he always brought with him a mystery meat. And so <laughs> when it came dinner time, uh, I was like, I was like, okay. Uncle Bobby's, oh, what do we have for dinner? Yeah, and my mother would never want to tell us because I, mm, I don't like it. Because we would have like rabbit stew. It's like, mm, rabbit stew. And then we would have, you know, Bambi burgers and moose burgers. Bambi burgers. Yeah, isn't that just wrong? So it would be like, what? Mm, Uncle Bobby, what's for dinner? <laughs> dinner. But you think about it now, how much do you pay for a great cut of venison in a, in, a, in a fancy restaurant? And a French rest restaurant, I mean, rabbit is, is a very French... French dish and it's delicious. But yeah. as a kid, you're like mm, mystery meat and hunting and Uncle Bobby. So, <laughs> <laughs> what do you th when you green see when chow you think chow. about green it's tomatoes? Or do you think about chow chow? Is that what you think of? Always. That's yeah. the only thing I ever think about. I think of fried green tomatoes at the movie. The movie. Yeah. We're back well, the TV, the book. <laughs> the book. Yeah. The, the book first, and then the movie. I did see the movie, but um, yeah. yeah, this is a very delicious traditional recipe, and this goes good with any any sort of side like as a side dish with, with yeah. any meat really it's a, there's a sweetness to it it's it's quite good but it does remind me of home and my grandmother and christmas and all of that so we will have tortier with green tomato cha cha and that was what was in my kitchen last awesome that's great i think one of the i just wanted to talk about a couple more things just okay. one of them it was fantastic it was the highlight of my week oh and it, you weren't here. Did you here. tell me about the highlight of your week? Well, you weren't here this week, oh, this past I was, weekend. I was away for a couple of days. You were away for a couple of days, and the Botanical Botanica Yarn Festival was on. Oh, right. And it was fantastic. It was really good. Oh, okay. And I'll tell you why. Do you want to know why it was fantastic? I know all about it. Are you sitting on the edge of your seat? Well, I am, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, so I'll, I'll tell you the concept of it. It was really focused on... I was trying to figure out what the common denominator is along 
for all the vendors, and I think it was non-superwash wool. So they oh. were, and and Botanica would lead you to believe that it probably has to do with natural dye, and definitely there's a lot of natural dyers there. There were some acid-based dyers, but there's also okay. um, natural dyers there. So non-superwash wool and um, lots of natural dyers, and the acid dyers were uh, had sustainable practices. So there was the sustainability okay. at yep. um, aspect of it as well. Here's what made it cool. Okay. It, um, when you think about the festivals that have now gone into the Zoom environment and or the Instagram environment, a lot of them took their festivals and just put them on a different platform. And so now we're looking at them on Instagram because we can't go to the festival yes. because of COVID-19. This was great because uh, in their concept was we're going to do Europe first for the first part of the morning and then we're going to oh. do North America the second part of the morning. How amazing is that? So we got exposed really to some European uh, vendors that we would never have or dyers that we would never have exposure to before. And That's so really I love that. It was great. And then in the middle of it, they had classes. They had carding. And the, these were free. They had carding wow, what? and um, that's good. Nail binding and sheep shearing and uh, a small loom. So it was really good. And here's the other great thing about this festival: is can you tell I'm excited about it? Because it was it was really good. It was very excited. No, that it's, I mean it sounds amazing. And then free classes. Who doesn't want to sign up? You just have to. But yeah. but here's the thing. So each vendor got 20 minutes on Instagram. Okay. They were very respectful of one another, uh, so they didn't run over. And the great thing about it was, I, I was thinking, okay, I have to get up at three o'clock in the morning and to see these things. Oh yes, you, that's I remember gonna, you mentioned that's that. not going to happen. Like it's going to be difficult for me to do that. So I slept in till seven, and so I thought I missed all of them. I get up and I see that they've taken each of these sections and put them on their Instagram account. So I didn't miss okay. anything. Okay, so you so, can watch them like later, like anytime? yes. So all of viewers watching there now, you. you can go to Botanica underscore um, Yarn Fest, oh, or just do Botanica on Instagram, and you can see all of the sessions. It's great. And they could go back and watch it like now. You, and you can go back and watch it now. It's oh, it was really, really good. good. I do want to highlight a couple of them though. Okay. Because I think if if you're limited for time, you know, if you're not sure which ones you want to look at, you. I would encourage you to look at all of them. It's only 20 minutes. It, it's great, and they're really informative. Um, but I do want to talk about a couple of them, and I wrote them down. Yeah, like people do have time on their hands, so they, they could glance through all of them. They, I mean, people love, I mean, everybody loves wool and anything free classes, so why wouldn't you just go back and at their own time just peruse through all of them? Yep, yep, definitely. So uh, the first one is Iris and Melissa for from Hook and Light, and they are really, I think, the... They were the the European brains behind this thing. That they were the ones who, yeah. who started this thing and wanted to to bring it about. And so they reached out to Christina of Bone and Birch, and Larissa from Fuzzy Green Fibers in the U.S. to make that connection. So the European and the North American connection. Yeah. But Iris and Melissa, they also have a YouTube channel. So I'll put a link to that, and I would check. Well, I've, I've seen. I think I've watched all of them now. They've got a great way of of talking about um, the taking. Uh, botanicals and using them for dyeing. The reason I'm mentioning them specifically is because I like their dyeing. I thought their dyeing was was quite not, was really nice. But they mm -hmm. have these eco bags that okay. they partnered with a bag maker, and they're yep. beautiful. So for pro people who like project bags, and I'm sure we have a few of them out, uh, yeah, yeah, watching as well. These oh, bags I are. Say you have a few of them. Well, I do yourself, have. The, I yeah, know, I don't have I, a few. I've of theirs seen yet. a few of them hanging about. Places. But they are so cool. They're really nice. So I you check those out. Check out their yarn and also their eco bags. Do people like collect them? Like just, I mean, they're gorgeous. I mean, everyone, I, I love creativity and everything that people are doing. And but do people will they say, well, they'll they'll say, oh, I need that bag because they love it. But some people like just kind of collect different. Like uh, <laughs> I could well, see that because well, some of them they are a work of art in themselves. They are well. The thing is, too. There's a couple. I've got a couple. I'm happy to hear viewers' comments on this because I'm. I can speak from one perspective, but I know I'm out of my element in another one. Or somebody so, else in the household might have a have a comment or two to say. Well, well what I was <laughs> well, going to say. Few. No, the road I was going to go down was that you've got a bunch of projects on the go, so you can keep them oh. in each of the the bags. Yes. However, I was thinking about purses and people who purchase buy purses mm. and do they have multiple purses and is it the same oh. thing i have no idea because i don't 
Interesting. I, have, I think I have one bag, but I don't really have a purse. So well, I'm just, just going to guess that most people have more project bags than they do have projects in them on the go. Mm, I don't know. Because if you're somewhere and you go, oh my God, I love that. And which is, well, I've seen that happen, believe it or not. And it's like, got to have that bag. And then yeah. your project bags aren't all filled with ongoing projects. So I, I and just, I don't have bags because all my projects are right here. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you've got a big head and you, <laughs> you can retain all of those projects in your head. Sorry, a big brain. I made a big brain. <laughs> I do have projects on the go. I do. So, okay, let's go to Europe. We're going to talk okay. about Europe firstly, and then sure. I've talked about the classes. So I'm just going to talk about a couple in Europe because I could have could mention all of them, but I encourage you to go and, and look at them. But one of them I wanted to talk about was Black Isle Yarns, um, Julie, and she's in the Highlands of Scotland. Was, Scotland's beautiful. Be love Scotland. Guess. Love, love, love. Yeah, I love Scotland. And she, you have to watch this. It's, it's great. She talks about, she uses local sheep. Mm -hmm. And she's got local sheep all around her as well, of where she's located. She's even got a map of the sheep and where they're located in oh, wow. proximity to where she is. That's amazing. Yeah, she, she's that that one was she's really interesting. I imagine just driving through the countryside and there's the sheep <laughs> on the hills and yeah, you well know, they are passing you. You know, slow down because there goes the sheep. Right yeah, passing through over the road. And Julie's sweater is gorgeous. I don't know if, I can't remember if she mentioned it or not. It's really nice, the one that she's wearing in, on, the, on the episode. So oh. check that out. And her yarn is beautiful too. So um, highly recommend checking that out. And then the next one is Woolen Flower. And Jules is in, from Australia. And she lives in Glasgow. And you're familiar oh. with Glasgow. Yeah, very oh, familiar. We watched a little bit of Yes. Yes, we yeah. watched. I, I, her husband was buying the camera. She was in front. Um, and so there's a couple things I want to say about this. Her wall of yarn is yeah. beautiful. It's so nice. And she has it listed, I'll put, try to pick a picture up here, but it's, she's got bases. So all of her bases are there. And then she does the same colors for all of her bases. And you can see how they're different in, in all different bases. All the variations bases. of the same color, like the same dye bath, but the different based yarn. Yeah, so you'll see one, it, one in Shetland might look different from uh, one, uh, well, yes. a silk and merino or But she or has whatnot. them there on her... She has them on her wall. Color wall, like a chart. Yeah, and then because yeah. your dye baths, when we're using dye baths, you know, the first dye bath is going to be stronger than uh, three three dye baths down. So she's also got different shades of in that color oh, as well. that's good. But the kicker in this is the studio she has. Yes, Because we're in the process of uh, creating an outbuilding and putting our studio out there. And in my mind, it's exactly what she has. So it's, I was really excited to see it. Um, but so, hers was like this and like this and window and yeah. When be, I say it was exactly be, ours, will be like this. But ours will be in the woods um, and and a little different. It's but gonna be but a I'm talking about the in the woods. I'm talking about the interior part of the studio is exactly the setup the would be the I setup. Know she had, the setup is a better yeah, word. She had a great setup and how you could envision how functionality yeah. um, comes to play because it was really good and her racks hanging from the ceiling. So it doesn't matter if you know we just have this little other yep. cabinet. An, an extra cabin in the woods there um but i could see how we yeah it's yep. very inspirational and one more i just wanted to mention from europe was ria burns and ria i first heard of her on fruity knitting she was interviewed is it ria or ray ria okay ria burns okay and um she is in uh, bristol and she also has a really interesting business model she uses um, fiber f locally from her area and then she has a local mill and then she does the dyeing and she grows the botanicals in her garden and then she makes she designs design so um, yarn she designs clothing out of it wow. and okay. yeah so she's she got the, like the everything, everything is like right there yeah All and, local, and she local. i think she machine knits uh, as well i mean you'd have to machine it my god if you're doing the entire process so mm. um so, and her designs are really interesting so i wanted to mention her Okay. So if we go over to North America now. So North America, so in the morning it was Europe. And then we moved to North America in the afternoon. And I just want to mention a couple here. One of them is Kalia, um, the Luddite. And she's from Edmonton. And I'm, I would not have known about her unless it was for the Botanical Festival. So I'm, I'm sure that our paths would have crossed somewhere down the road. But I'm really happy that... Um, 
that she was part of this, so I got to see her yarn. It's fantastic. She said something really interesting in her show. Okay. She's in the northern part of Alberta, well, Edmonton, like a higher up, and she was talking about the farms, and one of the challenges that the farms have is that the wool that they have, they a lot of them just dump it because the, to, to take the yarn all the way down to southern part of Alberta, uh, it just doesn't, it, economically, it doesn't, it's not feasible for them because they don't get, they get market price for it and it's just okay. pennies and it can't, won't cover the gas. Mileage. So do you, do you remember kind of a, kind of exactly where she is in Alberta? Like Edmund, like she's around El Edmonton. No, we just said north of Edmonton. <laughs> You can Google it. Check out. Check out. We'll put her exact location on the, on the show. No, only because I was going to say Edmonton. If you think about the province of, of um, Alberta, Edmonton and Edmonton and Calgary is so south, like very south. Yeah. And there's like, probably like you know hundreds and hundreds of miles north of the province. Yeah, I don't know the exact town. So if you're in. anywhere north of those of those two cities, like you're saying, to transport the wool anywhere, if she's yeah. anywhere north of there, you're there's pretty much tiny little farms and towns for, you know, it could be 500 miles north. Right. So if she's anywhere north of Edmonton, yeah, to bring it to the city is... So one great thing is she's she is working with farmers to say, hey, we've we've got a need and a market. We can get you a market as well. So, um, you know, hats off to her for that. Yes. And she's a great dyer as well. So check out her website. Um, the other Canadian, uh, there are a couple Canadians. Um, one of them, though, Ash, it, who... I'm not sure if we talked about Ash before on our mm. site, but she's uh, a very well-known natural dyer in Canada, um, out of Manitoba, and she's she's really a, a great dyer. But one of the things I wanted to mention about her is she has a scholarship program, um, and so I encourage you to go and check out her website um, because she has I think she's got 17 scholarships available, and they're for uh, BIPOC community, um, any. Um, I think, or part of the LGBTQ community, so it's really uh, focused in that in that area. How does she have scholarships available? Well, you'll have to How go on the, you you'll have to go onto the website and and through see. through her business. Yeah, yeah, through her business. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And what a great like it's a different That's way to look amazing. at to look at the business model. She's also heavily into herbs, and which okay. is very complementary to natural dyeing. So. Um, check her out as well. Okay, we're going to move down to the U.S. now. I've got two individuals I want to talk about from the okay. U.S. And one of them is Mother of Pearl, and it's Lauren out of Wisconsin. Lauren. Now, do I, have I watched Lauren with you? Not with me. You may have um, by yourself. But she's, she's great. She's a spinner, and she's a, a dyer, and she's a designer. And um, she's really interesting. She, when you... She's got this feel about her. Like when you watch her, mm -hmm. she really cares about what she does, but she can, you can tell she cares about the environment okay. and really appreciates where she comes from and the land that she's on. And it has a great feel to it. And she's so committed to this. She feels that she's really committed to the to that process. I mean, and so it's, um, I loved, I went onto her website and um, it says something about when you land onto her website, she said, you obviously care about what I do um, to, to be on my website. And just to have looked her up. Just to have looked her up, which is fantastic because I don't think about stuff like that. Yeah, but that's yeah, really, yes. that's, right. it was wonderful. It's, a, it's such a wonderful experience. So I'd highly encourage you to to check her out. And then the last one is Ginkgo Bee. Okay. Um, and Autumn is, is Ginkgo Bee. And her voice, let's start with her voice. She's got this passion and wonderful feeling about what she does, and you could sit there and listen to her all day. And it's 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 quite something. It's it's incredible. And you probably incredible. did while I was away. <laughs> I probably did. But her yarn is beautiful to a too. Different voice. <laughs> she does. She takes um, kitchen scraps and uh -huh. botanicals. Kitchen scraps. Yeah, like okay. onion peels and and um, okay. avocado and stuff like that, I'm and imagine. uses it. No, but okay. I'm I'm not. I know, making, I'm imagining. That's what she's I'm using. I'm imagining pork chops and chicken. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. And so her dyeing is really nice. She also dyes with wine. She was showing some. Oh. Dyed with wine as well, and okay. uh, and she's a designer. And so I mm -hmm. check her out as well. She's she's great. Really interesting. It sounds um, it sounds interesting, just yeah. like what you just said. But both of them, though, are really passionate about what they do, and that's what I love I love, I love about them. And they're great at what they do. So highly uh, recommend yeah. it. So just to wrap up on that, the Botanica 
uh, Yarn Fest. It was fantastic. Great experience. And the best part is everyone can participate in it because you can go on to their Instagram site and check them out. They're, now. Yeah, now. Yeah. They're available yeah. now. And I'll put a link to it. Okay. So, the last, well, that sounds like you had a wonderful time while I was I did. I had a great time while you weren't here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Botanica Fest. <laughs> so I guess the last thing I wanted to talk about was um, the last finished object I have. Oh, finished object. Which is really, it's a, Chris, it's a Christmas gift. Is that called an FO or a FOB? What is it? <laughs> Not a FOB like you use, never mind. Yeah, it's an FO. F -O? It's, a it's, it's a finished object. Yep. FO. Um, and so that's what I have. I just thought Bob because obje object has a B in it. So, so it's F-O. Okay. So it's so you can see it because it's not for you. Um, which is fine because I wouldn't be showing you right now anyway. Yeah. But I had very specific guidance on what this person wanted. And we're not gonna say the per who the person is because I don't think they're watching. Um, but I want to talk about this because it was okay. an interesting project. Yes. So the criteria was that the person wanted a cowl. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that they're not, they don't love wool because they grew up in a generation where wool yes. was itchy. They think it's scratchy. So they think it's scratchy. And so, and... A lot of people still do think that. You have to convince them otherwise. Yeah. And so, and they were very specific on um, the colors. Okay. So the colors are black and yellow. Okay. It's kind of the Boston Bruins colors. Well, that's a, that, that was my first thought. Yeah, I'm that's a what I thought. hockey <laughs> fan. I know you are. Yeah, and and person is. this person is a Leaf fan. Right. So, well, hockey fan. Yeah. So the other thing I wanted to do was, so I thought, okay, which what pattern can I find um, that would those colors would be complementary and, and it would look right. pretty good. So, so the pattern that I found was uh, Diamond Vision, the Diamond Vision cowl. Okay. Um, by Jay Katzenberger. Do you, does that name ring a bell? Mm. He's been here at Dark Heaven. Well, I thought so. <laughs> Don't embarrass me now. I'm like, well, well I no, thought, because, like, because you, Jay, know him by, you know him by Jay. I know so. Jay. I only know Jay. That threw me off. <laughs> so Papa <You're>, Baronet. <laughs> always chatting. So, no, no, no. I, I know you, you know him by Jay. That's why. Or Papa Baronet. He's always very, very mean to me. That's not true at all. That's not true at all. So anyway, um, so here it is. Jay's been here a couple of times. Yes. Yeah. And Jay's a cat lover, and I know it. <laughs> so I'll put this on. Did I just see a dog's tail? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So the objective of wow, this was, yes. I also used yarn that was thicker than I had called for because I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be upright and I didn't want it to slouch because the person so who, bulky. who wants it, um, would appreciate it if it was a little, um, stiffer, I guess, yeah. all the way around. And so it, it would, it would suck. Yeah. So that's, so that's what it is. Uh, but it was a great pattern to, mm. to knit up. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, and it's extremely soft. And why is it that it, remember? It oh, I didn't say what weighs, I used. It weighs, like, it's heavy. Yeah, I didn't say what I used. No. So, um, the person, I almost said who the person was. <laughs> the person probably gonna watch it. who doesn't like wool or who finds it scratchy, I decided to use alpaca. So the black is alpaca from Shed Alpaca. Okay. And the, do you know, do you remember what this is? No. The gold. I think I'm pointing to gold. Am I pointing to gold? Yeah, it's yeah. all gold. So the so the gold is actually the cannabis that I dyed, and it's oh, and it's merino. Um, so this shouldn't shouldn't bother the person. Well, it's extremely soft. It's gorgeous. Why is it so? Is it just the 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 stitch and the pattern that well, is so it's, thick? It's it's, it's also that I used wool that was gorgeous. I used um, fiber that was actually thicker than what was yeah, called for. Yeah, that's beautiful. And it's thick. I haven't blocked it yet. Soft, but, and warm, and it's very heavy. So it's a great pattern to, to, to knit up. I had a lot of fun doing this. Yeah, you were saying that all along. You said I it was really actually, liked it. So you found some, it, it, not the words not entertaining, but you did find it fun to do. Yeah, and it's available on Ravelry. And Jay mentioned to me that he has a sale going on for the rest of the month. Oh, so, that's um, good. Check him out. I'll put a link to, to this pattern um, on Ravelry. But that's, I really had a lot of fun knitting this. So. Yeah, and the thing, like you say, about scratchiness, because, you know, 
I, I, I have friends and people to mention like, oh, th thanks, like I knitted up something for a friend and oh, it's, you know, I'm allergic to wool or I find wool scratchy. And it's like, you try to convince them that, you know, if you use alpaca or something other than wool, another fiber that you can use. And some of them, they're not like the old ones. Like you say, they're like soft as a, yeah. kid, as a kitten. Um, it's hard to convince them otherwise sometimes, but yeah. until they have something that they try, they would love it and know that it's... Yeah, not an irritant. So that's that's basically it. Is it? What do we have on deck coming up? I don't know. What's coming out of the kitchen? I, I what what I've kitchen. heard is that it's we're getting close to tortilla season. <gasps> that's coming up. So mentioned tortilla. Oh my gosh, that would be up. so good. Yes, I love that. Um, so is that for the next episode? And I'm planning on remember I remember I didn't start my project yet with the socks from. Um, that I want I have I just remembered that I have those socks to knit up. Oh, yes, that's that's right You've got the socks to knit up. I have I've got a toque that I am knitting right now as part of a, a Group that I that just finished meeting this week uh, this weekend I want to share that with you and I think I've got a talk that's coming up in Yeah, that's in a right. Weeks. You do have a talk. Yeah, you do have a talk. And, yeah, and then you've just been invited uh, to another talk, but not knitting related which one? The church. Talk. The church. Yeah, that, that's the one. Yeah. So it's, but it's, yeah. it's actually to talk about knitting and dyeing, and it's to talk about um, my it passion is. for it. Yes. So it's probably related as far as what people in creativity and passions that people have in life. Yes. And, yeah. And just as a, and you, I know as well as a lot of people, and I just read when one of these, you know, one of these, I was just reading about how, you know, people and knitting and how it's it's some of it is very very personal and they they knit for various reasons but the one the one sort of link that i see throughout with many people is they they find their zen spot their their inner for sure peace. yeah they, they, it's a, a therapy for some it's it's all these things it's it means a lot to uh, to each individual for many many different reasons so yeah. i could see how that could relate to you know and this is more of a you know an open kind of uh not a, more of a newer now church as far as the way they, they, they like to practice and what they share and every individual is welcome to this particular church. It, it, that's, well, that's, I mean, I wouldn't do it otherwise. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. And, exactly. and the church is in Toronto and the minister is an awesome guy. We actually used to work out at the same time, oh, at the same right. gym. Um, and well. we'd always end up shaving at the same time every morning <laughs> so okay <laughs> we don't shave together <laughs> so so no so that we got talking and <laughs> and it turns out that we were born in the same hospital just a couple weeks apart wow okay yeah. that's coincidental yes and i'm hoping to you know you you knitted up several pairs of vamps out of the um uh, salt water <laughs> yes i have and that's one of my projects i want to do as christmas gifts for for the little ones so little pairs oh that'll be great little projects that'll be fantastic. short little where i can see an end to the actual project which is still doable before christmas and i'll christmas. and i'll have my yarn dyed as well for my sweater so i'm looking yes. forward to updating you on that so anyway i just wanted to thank everyone for watching yes um and thank the subscribers as well we i think we, yes. we cracked four thousand subscribers wanna, yes that's very <laughs> thank you because thank you no not thank you thank you yes. because yes <laughs> I think people people are just. I want to thank all of the new viewers and welcome and thank you. And if you're you're new to um, the the Woolcast, yes, do subscribe and say hey. And if you have any questions, this one will answer all your. I love questions. the questions, so keep the questions coming. I love them. I also almost forgot one thing. What the when we were talking about holiday gifts, mm -hmm. I would love to know. We would love to know what you are knitting for the holidays. If you are doing any holiday yes. knitting. And what I thought we would do is I'm making a lot of yarn right now out of the uh, oak tree. And yes. so I will raffle some off. And this so is you're a, thinking of doing another giveaway for Christmas? I'm thinking about doing a giveaway. Oh. So my giveaway is yarn. And this is how it will work. Let me know in the comment section. Let us know in the comment section what, you, what your holiday knitting is. And... Um, and if it's nothing, just put, you're not going to get around to it this, this year. And anyone who comments, I will put your, we'll, we'll put your name in a jar and then we'll draw it on the next episode and then we'll get the yarn shipped out to you. Okay. How's that sound? That sounds great. Awesome. So have a fantastic week and we look forward to getting together with you soon. See you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye.